Good morning. I wanted to share with you today some thoughts that I've had on the importance of agreeing. Uh, I think it's hugely important, but I wonder if you can think of a time, first of all, when you didn't agree with somebody. How did that feel? Maybe both of you were being a bit stubborn. Maybe you were fed up because they couldn't see that your way was the only right way. Um, maybe you had a falling out. And I just think of all the horrible feelings that go with that. The angst, the anxiety, the pressure, how uncomfortable it is. It's dead easy in these times when we're all locked up close together to come close to disagreeing with people and not being in agreement with them and can cause extra pressure on everybody else in the household. But how much easier is life when we're actually all getting along? Think about some of those holiday days, those times out, special days as a family and things that you've done and how amazing it is when everybody's actually getting along. And actually God loves it when we're all getting along. We often quote Psalm 133 on the subject. How good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. That includes sisters as well. It's when people are dwelling together in unity. It goes on to say, for there the Lord commands the blessings. God commands blessings when us mere humans agree. So if for no other reason, that's a great reason to really work at getting on together in these challenging times. I believe God loves it when we agree on things that he says in his word and when we agree together about things um, I'm looking at Matthew chapter 18 verse 19 to 20 some of you have probably thought of it already I tell you also this if two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask my father in heaven will do it for you for where two or three gather as my followers I am there among them so I want to make a simple challenge to you today find someone to agree with in prayer. Someone with whom you can do what it says in this verse, but be very careful who you choose. We're gonna look at a Bible story from the Old Testament. In the book of Kings and Chronicles, we read about many kings of Israel and Judah, and Judah. Very few of them loved God, and very few chose to follow his laws and try to do things his way. But one king stands out in particular, King Jehoshaphat. He really wanted to honor God, and he really wanted to do things right. He sent people out to teach in the towns and cities about the good ways of God. He got rid of idols and false shrines and he himself really loved God and wanted to do things right. He made sure his own household was honouring God and he really wanted to be in agreement with God with everything that was being said. And he became very rich and powerful. God really blessed him for it. He really seemed to be godly and wise. And I'm sure if he decreed things or if he decided things, I would have thought, yeah, I'd like to be on his side because I trust his judgment. But, and here is the problem with trusting somebody who's doing it really right all along and not reflecting back on, on what truth is. Despite the fact Jehoshaphat was really godly and powerful and at peace with everyone, he decided it would be a great idea to make an alliance, a close friendship, a relationship with King Ahab of Israel. Now, You've probably heard of King Ahab, most of us have, and none of it's good. But for some reason, Jehoshaphat thought an alliance with him would be good. So he made an alliance by, I think his son married one of Ahab's daughters, and they got together. And that's what we're going to look at next. To be honest, I'm a bit confused about why Jehoshaphat would have chosen to get close to Ahab, because he didn't need to. He was powerful and strong and doing well and, and full of godliness. But... Jehoshaphat wasn't perfect and he made mistakes and we can be a bit like Jehoshaphat ourselves we can make really daft decisions my goodness and I remember some of the decisions I made as a teenager people I really wanted to be friends with the in crowd um, and some of the compromises that I made to be in agreement with them and get along with them rather than actually following what I knew God had said and told me to do in my life and we can even do as adults we can make daft decisions and uh, do stuff to go along the crowd and just to keep the peace and not to irritate anybody. And it generally comes around bad in the end when we do that. I don't think it ever works when we compromise and we agree with the wrong person or the wrong value or the wrong decision. For us as believers, it's so important that our agreement comes first and foremost with God, with Jesus, what they're saying about things. Anyway, let's see how it worked out for Jehoshaphat. This is a Bible reading. It's from 2 Chronicles 18. I've used the message version, but virtually all of the words are lifted directly from 2 Chronicles 18. 
It's wild, it's crazy, it's a bit wacky. If you don't believe it, go and look it up yourself.